And this has to do with lateral directional Light. And so as a reminder, when we had longitudinal flight, we had the variables angle of attack, which is proportional to the vertical velocity W, we have the forward speed, we have the pitch rate Q, and we have thrust, lift, drag, and the pitching moment. So those are the forces. And we also have elevator that controls the airplane. And then for lateral directional flight, we have a beta, which is proportional to the side velocity. And then we have the roll rate and the yaw rate, R. And then we have side force, Y. And we have a rolling moment, L. And notice that there's an L up here and an L down here when we're talking lateral directional. It's always the rolling moment. And then the yawing moment, N. This is side force. Rolling moment. And the yawing moment. So now we're talking about all the stuff down here, these variables. And the controls here are the rudder and the aileron. So this is the rudder deflection. and the aileron deflection. So just like up here, we had pitch stability. Down here, we have yaw stability and roll stability. So we're gonna be talking about that. So we're gonna start with the yaw, with the yawing motion. Sorry, did you guys get that down? I'm gonna make sure that, are you guys caught up over here? Let's see a few people still writing. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at what's called yaw stiffness. And the reason they talk about a yaw stiffness is when you have a spring connected to like a mass, if you displace it, so here's equilibrium, if you disturb it out to here, the spring stiffness wants to restore it back to equilibrium. So the same deal with the yawing motion, the airplane exhibits yaw stiffness that wants to yaw it back to equilibrium. So that's essentially yaw stability. So, and this is fundamentally associated with side slip and beta is the side slip angle. And so positive side slip is defined to be the wind coming in from the right side of the airplane like this. So that's positive beta. So the wind's coming in from that way. And there's a side velocity of the airplane. The airplane is essentially sliding that way. 
So if you have an airplane and it's sliding to the right, then the wind is coming in from the right. So this is defined as positive beta. So what we want is the airplane to yaw with a positive yawing moment. N is the yawing moment because that's gonna reduce beta back to zero. Because if we have beta, we want the airplane to want to turn into the direction of the side slip to reduce beta back to zero. So positive side slip, the airplane responds with a positive yaw into the side slip. And so we talk about that as a change in yawing moment in response to a change in beta. So the airplane's flying straight. There's a, a disturbance. The wind comes in, so we have a delta beta. And we want the, the yawing moment to change in the positive direction. And usually we talk about it, this in terms of derivatives. So the change in yawing moment with respect to beta must be positive. Or just like all everything else, we're gonna write this as in terms of a coefficient. So let's define the yawing moment coefficient. So over here in our definition section, So yawing moment coefficient is C for coefficient, N for yawing moment, and it's N divided by one half rho V squared um, S, and then we use B. Make sure you notice the B here. Remember CM, let's write it up here. So you get pitching moment coefficient was C bar to non-dimensionalize it. And that's because C, gar, C bar is kind of a characteristic longitudinal dimension, right? It's a measure of how long the wing is in the, in the fuselage direction. Whereas wing span is a measure of how long the wing is in the sideways direction. And lateral directional flight has to do with sideways motion, so that's why we use B. So make sure you've, obviously you've memorized this already. Memorize this definition with B there so that you, you differentiate the two. Lateral directional flight, we non-dimensionalize with respect to B, longitudinal C bar. So that means usually this stability, we talk about not the derivative of N, but the derivative of CN with respect to beta. And all that means is just divide by all that other stuff to non-dimensionalize it. And we want that to be positive. Same deal, we're gonna yaw into the side slip, which is in the tendency, the direction that might reduce beta or will reduce beta. Again, we're not saying anything about the motion we're saying a disturbance happens about equilibrium and the response to the disturbance is a force or moment to reduce the disturbance. It doesn't say the disturbance gets reduced, that's the dynamic side. So this is static. Yaw, stability. All right, looking at the airplane, what piece of the airplane do you think makes this happen? Looks like it's the piece that's missing, right? It's the vertical tail. Because with the vertical tail aft, the wind coming in from this is gonna push this thing this direction, which is gonna create that yawing moment that's gonna give us the stability. 
Imagine an airplane with a vertical tail up here. How's that going to work? It's actually going to yaw away from the side slip and make the side slip bigger. So that's the whole reason why the vertical tail is in the back, is it's a yaw stability. All right, so we can calculate um, the vertical tail effect. The wing also provides a little bit and the fuselage provides a little bit of an effect, but it mainly comes from the vertical tail. So for the wing, before we get into the vertical tail, the appendix B equation, page 341, has estimates and ways to estimate CN beta for the wing. But the main effect is the vertical tail. So let's draw a picture of the essentially a free body diagram of the vertical tail. So here's the CG, this is the top view. X axis is forward, the Y axis is this way. And then down here is our vertical tail. Like that the force of the vertical tail acts at its own aerodynamic center, which doesn't leave myself enough room. So here's the AC. And so that's why in that homework that you turned in today, we were trying to find out where that thing is. Where does the force act on the vertical tail? Because that's gonna be the distance back from the CG that's gonna be our moment arm. So we call that LF and F is for fin. Because the vertical tail is a fin, a vertical fin, like on a fish, right? Sticks up. So the lift of the fin, we're going to draw that in here, acts at that point. And with beta, coming in, let's draw in our beta. The wind is coming in from that side like that. So we're gonna have to calculate, essentially beta gives us our angle of attack. So we multiply that by the lift curve slope to get the lift of the fin. The other thing that's gonna provide a force is the rudder. And so I'm gonna define the positive rudder now. And it's like that. So positive rudder is trailing edge left. And it produces, this is a nice way to re remember it, it produces a positive side force. Just like a positive alpha produces positive lift. So side force is in the positive Y direction so positive rudder produces positive side force, or you can just remember it as trailing edge left. There's nothing magic about that. Everybody in the world has just decided that's what we're gonna call it. That's positive. Now the other wrinkle here is just like with the horizontal tail, we had downwash from the wing. 
with the vertical tail, we have side wash because the flow comes around the fuselage and the wing and it may side wash into the tail. So let's define that. Sigma is called the side wash angle. And it's just like down wash only sideways. That's why it's called sideways, side, sideways, side wash. So we can think of the angle of attack of the fin as being beta reduced by the side wash. Let's see if I got everything in here. We got the rudder, we got the lift, we got the angle, we got, oh, which way is positive yaw? We drew it over there. You have to keep track. That's positive yaw like that, right? All right, so there's our free body diagram. We have a moment arm LF and we have a lift force capital LF. So what's our yawing moment? Put a fin on here because it's just due to the fin, not due to everything else. It's gonna be times moment arm. And we really ought to put in here, we have to get the perpendicular component of the force. So we really ought to put in a cosine of beta minus sigma, but we're gonna say that's approximately one for small betas. And then how about the sign? Do we put a plus or a minus there? The way we've drawn it, LF is going that way. The moment arm is back. That's negative, right? Now, we're, when we start to calculate LF, we're gonna get a positive LF from the rudder. You see that, right? But we're gonna get a negative LF from the side, side, um, side slip. So we just have to keep track of our signs when we go through that. And you just look at the diagram, this creates a force in that direction, check. This is gonna create a force in that direction because it's a negative angle of attack on the relative to LF and so we're good. Okay, the other wrinkle is that the velocity at the fin is gonna be less potentially than V infinity. Just like on the horizontal tail, we had V prime, it was tilted because of the downwash and it might be less due to the, the wing being in front. Now, typically we neglected that, but for the vertical tail, because there's that huge fuselage in front of the vertical tail, there may be a reduction in the velocity hitting the tail. So think of this picture. Here's our airplane, here's the cockpit, here's the vertical tail. And notice I've drawn it at a pretty high angle of attack. You can imagine that the air flowing past the fuselage might get slowed down before it hits the vertical tail. So this is the free stream. That's what it's not, it's the velocity at the fin. So we're actually gonna keep that as V sub F. All right, so we're gonna take the formula and we need to calculate the lift here. And the lift is coming from the rudder and the side slip. So we're gonna start with that formula.
All right, so let me copy that formula over here. And then we need to calculate LF. Well, it's gonna be the lift coefficient of the fin. So nothing new there. That's, we always predict aerodynamic forces by their coefficient times the appropriate areas. Notice we've used this and this, right? And so the key thing is to notice that the lift is predicted with the area here. And then how do we predict CLF? It's gonna be the lift curve slope times the angle of attack, which is the side slip. And then it's gonna be the lift produced by the rudder. And then this thing is called the rudder lift curve slope. It just tells you how much lift you get per degree of rudder or per radian. And we said, okay, a rudder produces positive lift, but the beta produces negative lift. So we have to keep track of that. And then this is how we're gonna get how this thing changes with beta, because there's where beta is. And that goes into here and that goes into here. So we'll be able to calculate the change in yawing moment coefficient with respect to beta. Right now, it looks like we're gonna get the correct sign, doesn't it? Minus, minus, so the derivative is gonna be positive. And it's all because LF is behind. So I wanna save time to turn back your quizzes from before. So we're gonna stop there. So remind me where we ended up.